Good day everyone. Uh, once again we're back together uh, looking at uh, question 6 of the DBE November 2021 paper. Right, uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please just be part of the family. And um, if you need assistance, either in mathematics or physical science, you're more than welcome to just get in touch with us. And our email address is info at mlumisingosi.co.za. All right, so let's look at that question six. Uh, they say consider the equation below for a hypothetical reaction. Uh, that takes place in a sealed two cubic decimeter container right um, so there's the hypothetical reaction of course it does not exist uh, they say define the term chemical equilibrium remember so when we talk about chemical equilibrium with this is where we say uh, this is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the react uh, reverse reaction okay um, so uh, 6.2 they give us the amount of substance that is present in equilibrium okay is shown in the table all right so there we've got the amount of p okay and remember that's in moles right okay and they give us also the temperature is now increased to 350 right when a new equilibrium is established it's found that we've got uh, 1.2 moles of P, um, which is in the container. So the question is, um, is the heat of the reaction delta H positive or negative? Okay. Now, I want you to just look at this. This is an initial equilibrium. Now, they told us very well, uh, they increased the temperature. They moved from 350 I mean, from 300 to 350, so temperature was increased. So what happened? So let's look at P. As they increased temperature, the amount of P moved from 0 0.8 to 1.2. What does that tell us? Okay. As they increased temperature, the amount of P, it means the reverse reaction was favored so that more of p actually was produced right so this tells us that actually uh, the reverse reaction was favored so remember an increase in temperature favors the endothermic reaction so it means that our reverse reaction is endothermic and so what does that tell us about the forward reaction it's actually exothermic so it uh, remember for an exothermic reaction um, you know, uh, remember that for an exothermic reaction, delta H is actually negative. So we can write that. So it's negative there. Okay, right. I hope that you were able to follow that uh, logic there. Okay, so they say we should now explain, uh, uh, you know, use Le Chatelier's principle to explain the answer in 6.2.1. I've actually just referred to it just now. All right, um, we said an increase in temperature. Um, so you state the change, all right? Uh, for those of you who haven't watched our full video on Le Chatelier's principle, right? Uh, this is how we always do it, okay? You put it in bullet point form. So an increase in temperature, okay? Please, I'm just going to abbreviate, um, favors the endothermic reaction, okay? Right, maybe let me just write that out. Favors uh, endothermic reaction. Endothermic reaction. Okay. Uh, so I will say the reverse reaction is favored. Okay. Uh, reverse reaction, rather. Reverse reaction is favored. Reaction is favored okay therefore the reverse reaction must therefore be endothermic okay so reverse reaction i'll just refer to it as rr is endothermic okay so therefore it must mean that the forward reaction is exothermic 
Okay, right. Um, you can also uh, perhaps state that, um, yeah, an increase in temperature here uh, uh, favored uh, the reverse reaction, okay, um, or use it, uh, or favors the reaction that uses up, you know, the temperature, the heat, right? Uh, in that case, uh, because uh, it must have been used by the reverse reaction, uh, it does mean that the forward reaction is exothermic. So I hope that um, kind of helps you in answering those type of questions. Remember, don't use a lot of words. Uh, please just keep it as concise as possible um, and get straight to the point. All right, now let's get to the next question. Uh, they say calculate the equilibrium constant at 350. So... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to move from equilibrium to equilibrium here. Okay, uh, so we're going to move from equilibrium at 300 and uh, at 300 to the one at 350. Okay, so I'm going to just draw my table quickly there. Okay. All right, let's give uh, enough space. Um, Okay, so we're going to actually just make sure that we put in, uh, so I'm going to say these are my initial uh, amounts and they are in moles. This is the change in moles as well. This is going to be equilibrium. That's going to be in moles as well. Okay, and this would be another uh, equilibrium but remember this is equilibrium concentration you can actually write concentration there and this is in moles per cubic decimeters okay so uh, what do we have we've got 2p okay uh, you've got q2 there and you've got 2pq right of course some of you prefer to write ratios there um, nothing wrong with that you know uh, you use that rice table uh, ratio and all of that nothing wrong with that I'm just going to just put in the ratios right there okay so let's start with what we had so this is what we had at the initial equilibrium so the amount of P uh, was given as 0 0.8 okay the amount of Q2 uh, was also 0 0.8 and the amount of PQ was 3.2 now please I want you to follow this logic okay so in this case at the new equilibrium so it means that uh, now we're going to use the new equilibrium at 350 as our equilibrium in a sense okay so we found that the amount of p was now 1.2 now please i want you to uh, listen carefully ladies and gents uh, because this kind of uh, you know opposes what we usually do here so remember it means that we favor the reverse reaction so uh, in a sense um, the products this time were used up to produce the reactants i want you to think about it that way because if i started with 0 0.8 and i end up with 1.2 right what happened here it means i produced more of p and how much more did i produce I must have produced 0 0.4 now I'm writing this with a, a, a different color because remember this is where we now use our ratios okay this is where we use our ratios so in this case I'll say for 2 of P I have 1 of Q2 right so uh, for 0 0.4 how much of that will I have so I'm going to use my ratios I'm going to say for 2 P I have got 1 Q2 okay so the question is if I have 0 0.4 of P how much okay I'm going to put it as X so you cross multiply uh, so just the coefficients 2 times X that will be 2X 0 0.1 times 1 this will be 1 divide both sides by 2 um, and in this case X would actually be uh, no 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 what did i do now uh, 0 0.4 times 1 is 0 0.4 yeah uh, almost made a mistake there so this would now be 0 0.2 and it makes sense 
Okay, for every two of this, you get one of that. So for uh, 0 0.4, you get actually half of that, which is 0 0.2. I just wanted to show you how to do that there. And in this one, you've got for every two, there's two, right? So for any amount of this, you get the same amount of that. So for 0 0.4, you actually will get 0 0.4. You can do the same thing uh, and you'll see you get the same amount. Right, now, uh, I just don't like using those pluses and minuses. Um, so I hope that you appreciate my approach to this. Okay, because I've seen people end ending up with negative values here and, and so on. Um, you know, so I'd rather we use it logically, right? So this is where the change took place. So I started with 0 0.8. Now remember, in this case, because we are favoring reverse reaction, it means I produce, remember Q2 is on this side, right? So it means I produced 0 0.2 more of the moles. So what do I have at the end? I've got one, okay, 0 0.2. 8 plus 0 0.2 uh, will give us 1. And then for this one now, remember we are favoring reverse reaction, so we are using up this guy. So we started with 0. Point, uh, I mean uh, 3.2, okay? And we use 0. 0.4, okay? I, I hope that you, you get that, right? We use 0. 0.4. So what do we have at the end? Of course, we should have less of it. Uh, which is uh, 2.8 in this case. All right, so I hope that makes sense. Now, of course, now we're looking for the concentrations, okay, but what do we know? We know that concentration is number of moles divided by the volume. We're given a volume of two cubic decimeters there, so it means I'm going to take all of those values and divide them by two, okay? So as 1.2 divided by two, that will give me 0 0.6, 1 divided by 2, that will be 0 0.5, and 2.8 divided by 2, that will give us 1.4. All right, now we can calculate our Kc value. All right, so we know that Kc, that's the molar concentration of our product. Now note our product is gas, okay? So in that case, we can say this is PQ, yeah, but remember, the coefficient becomes the power there, uh, divided by, um, now let's look at the reactants, okay? Now, uh, please, the fact that we obviously favor the reverse reaction does not now mean that we're going to change our, you know, uh, you know our expression of Kc. How they've expressed this equation is still, we're still going to maintain the same thing, right? So this is going to be P squared, and we are including P because it's also a guess and multiplied by Q2, okay? And in that case, uh, that is our Kc expression. Remember the coefficient of Q2 is one, okay? So uh, we don't include that. I mean, uh, this is also to the power one. Right, so now let's substitute. Remember square brackets denote concentration, but now I'm substituting that concentration. So that will be uh, 1.4, okay, squared, divided by um, concentration of P uh, was 0 0.6, uh, we square that, multiplied by the concentration of uh, Q2, which is 0 0.5. Okay, let's try to calculate that quickly. So we've got 1.4 squared, divide by 0 0.6 uh, multiplied, oh, squared actually, 0 0.6 squared multiplied by 0 0.5. Okay, so I get a value, a KC value of 2.8888. So let's just round it off to 10.89, okay? So that is our KC value. All right, so I hope that uh, that was uh, clearly understood. Okay, um, yeah, so it was a little bit of a tricky question, but nonetheless, I'm sure you guys uh, uh, were able to figure it out. Uh, I do think there is a question that I once advised on this. I'm not too sure about it though. 
Um, but yeah, now you know how to tackle that those questions. Right, then the next question, they say, how will the equilibrium constant calculated in 10.6.3 be affected when the volume of the container is decreased at a constant temperature? Please remember uh, that Kc only changes, okay, when uh, there is a change in temperature. Uh, but so in this case, uh, for 6.2.4, okay, uh, we would actually have, uh, uh, it would remain the same. So that would be our answer for that. It would remain the same, okay? And if they want us to explain, give a reason, we'll say only temperature, only temperature changes Kc value, okay? Um changes the Kc value or the equilibrium constant. Okay, right. Um, and then 6.3. Okay, so they say more of Q2 is now added in the reaction mixture at constant temperature. So there it is. There's our equilibrium there. We are adding more of Q2. Okay, uh, if uh, you remember my Pac-Man, uh, uh, not uh, my Pac-Man analogy rather, uh, if you think about my seesaw analogy, right? Uh, in this case, they say, uh, how will the, uh, each of the following be affected? Okay, uh, choose increase, decrease, or remain the same. Right, the yield of PQ, of course, an increase in the amount of, of uh, Q2 in that case will favor the forward reaction, okay? Um, so in that case, if we favor the forward reaction, uh, we will produce more, of uh, PQ. So in this case, it means that the yield of Q2 should actually increase. Okay, so that should increase there. I'm thinking someone as they see this response or this, uh, uh, you know, this answer to this question, uh, they'll be actually very happy uh, to see that they actually did well. All right, and then um, remember the yield is the pro production or it's the you know it's the amount of moles of the products that are produced okay and then they say how will it affect the number of moles of p right and of course you know once we favor the forward reaction um, when we add more q2 we are favoring the forward reaction so it means that more of p will be used up and more of q uh, q will also be used up in fact that's the very reason we're favoring the forward reaction to decrease the amount of Q2 that's been added. And as a result, it means that uh, P uh, will actually decrease. Okay. So in that case, we will say it will decrease. All right. Okay. Uh, and that is how this cookie crumbles. And we shall leave it there. All right. Uh, hopefully you are able to enjoy this uh, section. Um, I'm going to see by the comments uh, whether you guys uh, actually got this one correct. Okay, uh, for those of you who've already written this exam. All right, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Uh, thank you for watching. Shop, shop.